10 inches of snow. Oh, wow. I should go down there. Hmm, Jason's calling me. I better pick up. Hey, dude, what's up? Hey, Gary. Hey, I'm thinking about doing the Laurel Highlands soon. It's got a lot of snow expected in the forecast. Maybe you can come and do a little shakedown for your through hike. Oh, yeah? Winter trip? That sounds good. I do need to test out, like, a lot of my gear and stuff, uh, especially before the 18 and everything, make sure it's all working. Cool, man. How about next week? I'm going to ask a couple more people to see if they're free. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, I could meet you at your place. We could go meet up with everyone. I even have my pack all ready and everything. All right. Awesome, dude. I'll see you in a few days. Hello. Meerkat. What's up, man? Hey, Fraser. What's up? I'm trying to get a few people for the Laurel Highlands hike again. I'm supposed to have like 10 inches of snow down there next week. Are you interested? Yeah, I'd be down for a trip. A nice winter trip with lots of snow, cold. That'd be pretty fun. Can you think of anyone else that'd want to join? Hey, you know what we should do? We should invite Tim Watson along. He'd have a blast. Yeah, that's a great idea. I'll give him a call right now. All right, man. I like it. I like it a lot. I'll see you there. So this sucker is about 0.6 ounces, which is pretty incredible when you think about it. It's made of aluminum and it just has been perfect for my needs. And and so it's it's just about the same digging it. Ugh. Han, can you get that, please? I'm in the middle of filming. Middle of filming. Hello. So, point six. Some guy named Frozen for you? Frozen? <laughs> Hello. Tim. Hey, it's Frozen. Oh, hey, Jason. Hey, I just got off the phone with Gary and Meerkat. Oh. Wanted to see if you were interested in joining us for Laurel Highlands. Laurel Highlands hiking trail? Uh, yeah, that sounds kind of awesome. When do you, when you want to go? I'm thinking next week, maybe Thursday. That area is supposed to have 10 inches of snow. So, 10 inches of snow. Oh, that is going to be so epic. Okay, so you're in? Yeah, I, I am so in. This is going to be awesome. Yeah, so me, you, Gary, and Alex. We can talk about details now, or I can just text you later once everything's finalized. It's kind of the middle of something here, but, I mean... That sounds, that sounds great. All right, dude, I'll see you in a couple days. Later, man, see you soon. Bye. Hmm. It's gonna be really cool. Hey guys, welcome to Outdoor Adventures. I'm Frozen. We got Gary, Meerkat, and Timmy over here from hey. Tim Watson Outdoors. Yes, we're up here in the Laurel Highlands yet again. I hope you guys aren't getting sick and tired of this, but it'll be a great winter trip. We were hoping for 10 inches of snow and like, what was it, eight degrees or something crazy, but it's gonna be a little bit warmer. Probably the snow's gonna be melting tomorrow while we're hiking. It'll be four days, three nights, 40 miles. Let's do it, guys. So for this trip, it's about 22 degrees right now. We just hit the trailhead park a lot. We parked uh, at 271, and we parked another car at Route 653 shelter area. It's in the low 20s right now, and tomorrow it's supposed to get up to like 50. So yeah, most of the snow should be a muddy mess tomorrow afternoon. Not a lot of miles. Like I said, we were, um, we were planning only you know, 10 to 12 miles a day because we thought we were gonna hit eight inches of snow. It was actually probably gonna turn into a snowshoeing trip last week, uh, as you saw in the intro. But uh, yeah, it warmed up to like 65 degrees a couple days ago. It snowed last night, so that brings us to today. Got some new gear to try out on this trip. Going with the canister stove again. Got these Z-Pax Vertice rain gaiters. I asked Z-Pax, I was like, hey, how do these work in the snow? They said, we don't know, we've never tried them in the snow. Would you like to test them for us? And I said, sure. So we're definitely gonna test them. Hopefully they work, because they are light, really light comparatively to some of the outdoor research stuff that I had earlier. 
All right, looks like we're about to actually hit the Little Highlands hiking trail. We are going south all the way back to Route 653. Like I said, about 40 miles. Yeah. Gary, you want to give your big announcement? Is it, I put it on hike thike, but uh, yeah, I'll be starting my AT through hike uh, February 25th. So, so be sure to follow him. He's hike yeah. the hike on Instagram. It was very neat seeing it with snow on the ground. Granted, not a lot of snow, but still enough. Stunning out here. Breaking trail. Nice day. Snowing a little bit. But this scenery, man, it's awesome. Look at that. All right, so Gary actually got a new pack. This is the pack he's going to be bringing with him on the Appalachian Trail. Probably. Gary, what is it? The Palanti simple pack. simple pack. This has got to be the coolest thing about this. So if you zoom in on Gary's butt right here, huh? stop moving. Look. You can grab all so, your gloves or whatever. There's this little pocket right here. Yep. A little stretchy mesh, and yep. uh, it just gets stuff in and out really quick. Don't put a map in there though. No, don't put a map I in there. I did put it in there and it, it got soaked. It was <laughs> yeah, because it was pouring down rain. So, Gary is still leading the pack right now. I don't think he realizes it yet. If I would ask him the number one thing he hates, I guarantee he would say leading on a hiking trail. Hey Gary, yeah. what's the number one thing you hate while hiking? Leading. Leading? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, this is gonna be the lunch spot for day one. I don't even know what I have. I think it's a ramen bomb. I'm not sure. Let's check it out. All right, guys, we have a North Sides. I think this is chicken flavor. I can't remember. I repackaged them all into these Ziploc bags, and I kind of forget what I'm bringing. But I had lost the BRS titanium stove in the snow, and Alex was able to find it next to my foot somehow. So thank you, Alex. That would have been... Uh, we would have done it, but that would have sucked. Do what I can. So, uh, just trying to block the wind a little bit here. And we're gonna have a nice warm hot meal. It's gonna be really good. We uh, bundled up before we stuffed for lunch, man. It was just uh, really, really windy on that ridge. And every time the wind blew, it just robbed all your warmth out of your clothing. Man, this looks like Whiskey Run. I think that's Whiskey Run. It looks like Whiskey Run. A big turkey through here, I think at least. That's what Alex said. Look at them tracks. Oh, wow. These are the Z-Pack Spertise. They're labeled as rain gators, but I asked if I could try them as snow gators, and this is what's happening. So, not really working as a true snow gator. You kind of need the straps that uh, are on like the outdoor research or normal gators. But uh, yeah, so I'm just, I have to kick that off and break that ice chunk, you know, on a tree or a trekking pole, but you know, it's happening a lot. Back to not wearing gaiters. That's a shame. I really wanted those to work because they're so darn light. And the fact that I could take them off without having to take my boots or my shoes off is just excellent. Not blaming Z-Packs. They are not for snow hiking. I was just, like I said, really, really hoping because they were so light that they would work out for me. It's 3.30, I think we gotta go up this giant hill and shelter should be pretty close, Route 30 I believe it is, that we're going to tonight. Gary, we almost there? Yeah, almost there. Last hill? Yep. Right around the bend? Yep. All right. Should be hitting it in about, maybe a, maybe a little less than a mile. Just climb that huge hill, but we did make it to, what is this, Route 30, I guess. So we'll be following blue blazes all the way down. If you remember the last group hike, that's where we had lunch the second day, right in that shelter. All right, guys, it's a little bit before five o'clock. We are camped out right in there, getting, trying to get the fire 
going. Everything's a bit wet here, obviously. I am <clears throat> going to be using a couple different things. It's supposed to get down to 22, 24 degrees tonight. However, the next couple days, it's going to be in the 30s. So I didn't want to get too hot. Some of the nights are actually going to be in the 40s. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my 40 degree, three quarter length Phoenix underquilt in conjunction with my 30 degree enlightened equipment underquilt. And then I'm going to use a zero degree enlightened equipment top quilt. And uh, hopefully that'll work out pretty good for me. So we'll see how it goes. I'm not sure it's going to work. I'm not sure if I'm going to be warm tonight. I'm hoping. But uh, with this setup, I should be able to get down to zero or at least 10 degrees comfortably. So as long as it doesn't dip below that. It's actually a really nice camp spot. I actually remember staying here on my first Laurel Highlands through hike on my second night I was here. And it was amazing. I woke up to the... Uh, sunrise right over there and it was just fantastic anyway I'm gonna get my stuff set up and then I'm gonna go help make that fire all right the guys got the fire going these uh, waterproof shoes or yeah they're not waterproof sorry but dry out my socks I'm trying to get some non ice water <laughs> there's Gary me there's Tim back there I think you can see him let's yeah. see you can see him and then Alex, wave up. Alex. <laughs> wave, come on. <laughs> Alex is uh, in the bag already. Yep. Keep him warm. <laughs> well, guys, I'm just standing outside looking up at the stars. It's pretty amazing. Wow, we got a nice moon tonight too. That is so cool. <laughs> All right, we're going to head back to the hammock here. It's a little bit after 8. Actually, I have some things on my phone to watch tonight, which would be kind of neat. As you know, especially in the winter, it's nice to have something to do between the hours of 5 and 10 o'clock. Close the doors tonight. Like I said, I'm using that 40 and that 30 under quilt, and then I got the zero inside there. It's already getting frost on my tarp. Wow, I can't even believe that anyone new to winter backpacking you want to before you go to bed you're wearing boots or shoes or whatever you want to do you want to try to open your shoes up as far as you possibly can the reason is the water from the day the snow and your sweat will actually freeze overnight and you'll be stepping into blocks of ice in the morning it's not very fun at all but at least if you open up your shoes as wide as possible you can at least get your foot inside your shoe so that's what I'm gonna do I'm just set them back here so you can see I got both doors closed hoping condensation is not an issue but I'm also worried about if the wind picks up I'm using the 30 and the 40 quilts right there as you can see layering them up should get me down to zero I'm gonna say 10 degrees comfortably but never done it before so we're definitely gonna see so, oh, another thing I got is in this tiny little stuff sack. Now, as you know, my feet get incredibly cold during colder weather. So I opted to get these little, they're just little down socks, down booties is what they're called, goose feet gear. I got the 30 degree model. I got it to match my enlightened equipment quilt. So we got the red and then black, same as in here, red and then black. So we're gonna try these tonight. I'm definitely gonna need these because I do have that three quarter length under quilt. It's 40 degrees and the 30 is just, I don't think gonna cut it tonight. Not with my cold feet at least. So these will go on my feet and hopefully keep them nice and toasty warm. These are really, really light. You can either get these on Z-Pax's website or you can order directly from the manufacturer. Anyway guys, with that, I'm gonna have a nice warm night, hopefully. And I'll see you in the morning. Should be about 25 degrees when I wake up. Here's hoping for a little bit warmer. Good night, guys. Got three more days. Hmm. Oh, good morning, guys. It's actually a really good night. It's almost 7:30. Got a lot of sleep. Wow. Slept really warm. Really warm. We'll get up and see if the guys are even awake. Alex said he's going to keep the fire going all night, so 
see if that ended up happening or not. If he did, it's going to be pretty cool. Anyway, the uh, double under quilt worked out perfect. No complaints. Didn't slip. Didn't do anything. Just kept me warm. Look at that sunrise this morning. It's beautiful. Well, it looks like they got the fire going. Guys are up. Good morning, guys. Good morning. How'd you guys sleep? Hot. Excellent. Hot? Hot. <laughs> nice, nice. What's your thermometer saying here? Well, it's 48 <laughs> because of <laughs> Because of the fire. <laughs> nice. It feels it feels toasty in here. We had it so hot that we were taking hats off and sliding away. Perfect. I can't believe how good that fire's going. Jeez, man. Dude, you have no idea. That's <laughs> nothing. At one point, it was like as bright as the sun in here. <laughs> it it looks like it. it woke I can see my water bottle bright. melted. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Well, all we gotta do is wait on Gary. You know how Gary is. Wait, Gary is uh, is up. Mm. Gary is awake. Oh my gosh. Fully clothed. I hope so, cause I'm zooming in. <laughs> <laughs> Making our way back to the trailhead. We got all packed up. Great night's sleep, good food this morning. Raring to go, we got 14 miles today, down to Route 31. Points of interest today, we're gonna be getting onto Beam Rocks, which is a pretty cool overlook on Laurel Highlands hiking trail. And Alex will be doing some drone flying up there, so check out his video when he publishes it over at Meerkat Hiking. Really, really good night's sleep last night. I needed that so bad. I've been uh, fighting off some kind of cold, and I feel really, really good today. All right, guys, we are back on Laurel Highlands Hiking Trail, just passing, I think, what's that, mile marker 40, 46. So we are going past uh, Beam Rocks into Forbes State Forest to Route 30 today. And look at this trail, guys. It is such a beautiful day out. no idea. Yeah. Me and Gary about to rock some shorts pretty soon here. Yep. It's cooler out here. Yeah. Definitely warmer than yesterday. It's probably in the uh, maybe low 30s at this point. At least. Yeah. Maybe 29. Yeah, All right, I think this is Route 30. I saw some people up here. Awesome. Snow is definitely going to melt today. Wow, look at that. Beautiful. Misty morning. Yeah. So what half these people think when they see us driving by? Mm -hmm. Man, look at this moron. <laughs> no moron. <laughs> Alright guys, we're gonna get water here, I think. Yeah, why not? Well, that's the bottle that has the uh, <laughs> the damage on it. So we pre-mixed some aquamira. And just left it in the bottle and just filtered that. That's why you didn't see me purifying it. So, for anyone wondering. Anyway, you guys ready? Gary? Good? I got cooled down at least. It's hot. We're just saying how well the person that created the trail did in this area. You know, they had to scope this place out and figure out how to do it. But, I mean, you're taking scenery like this you usually don't see anywhere in this area it just makes you wonder how much of this kind of stuff is off trail to be found There is no better feeling like wearing shorts while you're hiking. As long as it's not like 20 degrees, if it's in the 30s, I'll be wearing shorts. Gary's rocking them too. Alex is too, pretty much. Tim's the only one wearing pants. 
but uh, I can understand that. I was thinking just how wonderful it is out here. I can't, I can't even believe it. Sun's shining, it's not cold. It looks like it's cold, but it's not. And uh, just wearing the Patagonia R1 and the Columbia shorts is just perfect for me at 30 degrees. So it's pretty nice. When I get back to camp, put the layers back on, because we'll be staying still. You know, get colder when you're staying still, obviously. Get a nice fire going. Now, tomorrow it's supposed to rain at 3 o'clock. Fortunately, we only have like, I want to say 8 miles planned. We are going to do a spur trail down to a waterfall, but we'll see. It's supposed to rain at 3, so if we can get set up before that, just kind of chill, maybe have a little Fred, and it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time. If you're familiar with the channel, if you've been a subscriber for a while, you know I just don't sleep. Especially at home. I probably get four or five hours of sleep at night. But that 11 hours, I just, I'm ready to dance down the trail at this point. It's a wonderful feeling. And we just passed mile marker 44. Well, we got a really nice view. <laughs> Over here, not Gary. Right here. So, what do you guys think? It's pretty nice. Yeah. It's nice. Liking it. Liking this nice a lot. Day. Alex likes it, he likes it a lot. I like it, I like it a lot. <laughs> the sun feels awesome. The sun does feel great. Packs off. Alright guys, I think we just reached our lunch spot for the day. Top of Beam Rocks. We started way, way down there. Yeah. Now I've seen this officially in all four seasons. Camera has like a stabilizer in it. It's got like a three point, a three axis gimbal. Did you oh. see his Tracy Ridge? Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah. The uh, trip on. Uh, Did some drone flying up on Beam Rocks on Meerkat's channel. So check his video out at Meerkat Hiking. It's gonna be pretty cool. It'll be an interesting perspective, to say the least. You can tell the snow is definitely melting under our feet today. Definitely warmed up quite a bit from yesterday. <laughs> We figured we have what, about nine more miles? Eight? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So. Gary, do you have any inspirational quotes for us today? Uh, I don't know. Why am I always the inspirational quote person? Because you're an inspirational type of guy. Hike the hike. Hike the hike. <laughs> no, seriously, come on, inspiration, go. I don't know. I don't have inspiration. Gary, <laughs> you don't have inspiration, really? Yep. Wow, that's a shame, Gary. Yeah, close enough. Yeah, you'll hear it. Oh. Oh, it All right, we are right next to the Turnpike Bridge. You'll probably hear that, it's right over there. Stopped here to get some water before we hit camp in what, about three, four miles or so? Four. Four miles, says Tim. Yeah, four. I remember. Once he, we get to the from, Turnpike, uh, four miles. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, we're at, we're at the Turnpike. Once we get to the bridge. Yeah. So eight from uh, Beam. Oh, Highlands Hiking Trail Bridge over the Turnpike. Entering the Matrix for just a little bit. Let's see if we can get one of these trucks to beep. There we go. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was that was really cool, huh? <laughs> What is LNT? Leave the trace. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> talking to Gary about him hiking the AT in literally 30 days from now. It's uh, really, really getting me motivated to try and push for a 2019 through hike of that trail. I think it's going to happen. I'm about I'm probably 80% sure at this point. So, you know, I'll do the official announcement thing later on this year if it's going to happen I'm trying to figure out some logistics with saving money and uh, what I'm going to do with my house and stuff but really really I can't tell you guys that enough really want to hike the Appalachian Trail and I feel like just from the comments I've received when I first started talking about this you know do it now while you can while you're still young you know don't have a family yet I'm hoping that happens soon here, but 
you, know, you never know. I don't know. But I, I don't want to keep saying I'll do it next year because it'll never get done. I want to just make the decision, do it, get it done. I always said, man, if I make it past the Smokies, because in the Smokies you're required to stay in the shelters, and I don't really sleep good on the ground, but if I do make it past the Smokies, I guarantee you I'll be touching that Katahdin sign. I have the motivation. You know, I, I love these trips. Absolutely love them. Favorite trail I've ever done, Superior Hiking Trail, 240 miles. Absolutely excellent. I did not want to get off that trail, but I really, really want to hike the AT. I wanted to hike it with Gary because I think that would have been really, really neat to do that with him. But the finances just didn't work out this year. Uh, work has been driving me crazy. And uh, it's just, I need a change, you know what I mean? I'm sorry I'm rambling right now. But I need some kind of change and it needs to happen very, very soon here. Else I'm going to go crazy. Pull a Britney Spears or Chappelle. We've arrived at the infamous 35 and a half mailbox. Kind of like a little hiker sign-in box, pretty much. Right, Gary? Yeah. Right. Where's so, been? Well, as you can see, most of the snow is melted or melting in this area. Over there through the trees, you can see the hill. It doesn't get any sun right now. That still has snow on it. But it's crazy to see that transition when you're out here. Well, see, there's actually snow here. <laughs> uh. Hey, but. didn't you say there was a five? Yeah, we're back here. That's ours. Is it? Yeah. That's perfect. We're staying at Shelter 5, I can't even believe it. My first through hike of this place was at Shelter 5. A little nostalgic for me. Well, I was gonna set up in between these two trees, but then I saw this guy right here, and I'm not too comfortable with that right there, and this right here. So I'm gonna keep looking, I think. Last thing I wanna do is get killed by a tree while I'm sleeping. Doesn't sound too fun to me. I find setting up a hammock really, really relaxing. I, I don't know why, it's just uh, puts me in my zen state. Anyway, I love talking about setups as far as tents, hammocks, doesn't matter. So let's take a look at what I'm using tonight compared to last night, and then I'll show you Alex, Gary, and Tim's setup. Now, tonight is the same exact setup for me, minus one item. I have the zero degree light equipment quote in here. But tonight I'm just using the 30, so there's not a 40 degree Phoenix from Hammock Gear in here. It's only supposed to get down to like 33 tonight, 31, somewhere around there, so I should be good. I brought this down to 24 before and didn't have any problems. Plus, I have a ton of extra layers, so it should work out fine. And then the Hammock Gear Cuban Fiber Tarp. Probably shut one door by my head this time, so I can allow some ventilation due to condensation. I didn't have any condensation last night, though which was really, really good, and I had both of these doors closed up pretty darn tight. Now today I do want to break the news to the YouTube channel that we have a very, very sad thing that happened today. We lost a very, very good hammock member to ground dwelling. So let me show you what happened here. Alex Meerkat, as you know, was in a beautiful war bonnet blackbird, and for whatever reason, he decided that it would be cool to switch to ground dwelling. I don't know why, but he is now in a Z-Pax duplex. So, I'm really sorry and really sad to see him go, but that's just the way things are. Right, Alex? <laughs> anyway, Gary's set up in a 
Z-Pax Soulplex. So you can kind of see these two things side by side. So they both look really, really nice. Z-Pax does a great job at both of these tents. Like I said, one person Soulplex, two person Duplex, both Cuban fiber. Very, very good tents, very, very high quality. But if I was to get a tent, I'm not even sure which one out of these two I would get. I like having the extra room, but also I like the smaller footprint that the Soulplex gives you. So yeah, I'm not sure. All right, and here's Timmy's setup over here. Got the Warbonnet Mini Fly, right? Right, Tim? That's a nice camo, man. Wow, look at that camo. I'm not a big camo guy, but that looks really cool. Yeah. Wow. Bushwhack camo. So you don't have the doors on my hammock gear tarp, but this also kind of has doors. This will stop the blowover from the rain getting in. Unless the rain gets some artificial intelligence and decides to go <laughs> blow underneath somehow, that will stop the rain. Usually you're getting it on an angle right here and that's how it gets in. So this is a very, very good yeah. design. How do you like it so far? I like it a lot. You like it a lot? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Meerkat. No, it's, it's pretty. Like even just by itself, I yeah. just like the camo. Yeah, I like it. I'm liking it a lot. And you got a, what, a dream hammock? Dream hammock Darien under there. Nice. This is this beautiful dream hammock Darien. Now, I know this might surprise some people knowing that I love the Warbonnet Blackbird, but I'm actually looking at this. I really like this fabric. What is the fabric? This is a 1.6 Hyper D. Do they have a 1.2? It might be new. Okay. I think they just came out with it. Cool. So this is something I am curious about. I may actually see if Randy, I believe, Papa yeah. Smurf, right? Yep. I want, I'm, I'm trying to see if he'll take me on a tour where I can try some different fabrics. He's out in Ohio, I believe, not very far away from me. I'd love to take a drive to see his shop and check him out. Not because I don't like the war bonnet, but just because I want to try something new and give you guys some feedback. You could lighten up a little bit more, I think. Yeah. It's so minimalist. I mean, it's yeah, it's very, bright. it's it's a couple ounces lighter than the Blackbird. So, and you got the a nice ridge line on that thing too. I'm liking it, man. Yeah, it's cool. I like the setup a lot. Yeah. Especially for like a, like right now it's in storm mode, even though we're not yeah. getting it, but I like Keep it. Keep some heat in. Is there yeah, anything you don't like about your setup that you change right now? I don't think so. No? Probably if anything, I would extend the, I think the mini fly is just enough. If there was like just like a couple inches more. A couple more inches on the mini fly. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Well, came down to the shelter to help start a fire and they already had it going. So, <laughs> good job, guys. Yep. Trying out some socks. We're looking around for the wood. I think it's down by the restrooms or something. Alex is playing dangerously. Mm -hmm. so. Alright, guys, it's about 6 o'clock. We are just starting to have some dinner. I realized I left one of my dinners probably sitting on my kitchen table so I'm making up for that having a breakfast and we're gonna do three honey buns <laughs> on uh, the day out on Sunday the Petzl Actic I will be giving my review after this trail I promise guys I know some of you have been asking me long story short it's awesome get it there's one feature that I wish it had though alright guys it's about 10 o'clock welcome back to the hammock me and Gary were talking about the AT through hike for him He's motivated He's ready. He's gonna do it. All right, guys. All nestled in. Got my buff, half buff, acting as a balaclava, kind of keep the moisture off of the quilts. Also, Frostbed does the same thing, but this has been working out pretty good. I think in temperatures down to 20, this works. Anything lower than that, I would use a frost bib. Anyway, this light's really bright. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to turn it off and go to bed. Good night, everybody. I'll see you in the morning. Hey, look, Gary is here. How did you sleep other than me coughing all night? You? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I slept right through. Okay, good. Thank God. Really good. Dude, every 10 minutes, hacking my lungs up. The only different thing is I'm we're still on the hill, so my uh, pad slid all the way across. That's the one issue with the sleeping pad instead of oh, the inflatable pad instead of the foam. It's yeah, or just get a hammock. Place. Or just get a hammock. <laughs> good morning, everybody. It's a little bit after 7. Got down to 32 last night. Uh, pretty surprised. 
I did not sleep good at all. I'm not gonna lie. That was it was a windy night. I was up coughing most of the night. I was so afraid that I was gonna wake the guys up. Like I said, I'm getting over this cold or whatever the heck I've been having here, losing my voice, whatever it is. And uh, well, let's get to the positive side of things. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. Um, not a cloud in the sky from what I can see. Beautiful sunrise today. We got a mix of colors over here as you can see. I found my sit pad which I thought I had lost. It was blowing down the trail when Tim went to go use the restroom. So I do have my sit pad so that's good. And uh, we're getting a fire going. So all is well. Uh, my feet actually hurt a lot. Uh, more than the Superior Hiking Trail if you can believe that. But take some vitamin I after breakfast I think I'll be alright. Right Gary? Yeah. I think, uh, I think we were talking about on the SHT is like it takes time to condition for it so like uh, all these shorter trips are harder than the uh, SHT yeah, it, it, you're already conditioned you that's, know, exa through. that's exactly it it's gonna be almost good after that almost. yeah when you stay in Laurel Highlands and you're staying in a shelter go ahead and put some dry wood underneath the floorboards they actually recommend that you do that they want you to do it and there's nothing better than being tired getting to a shelter and coming back to dry wood at your campsite Especially on a day like today, where by the time most of the people that are getting to camp, it's going to be raining today. So it's a very wonderful feeling of knowing that you can at least get a fire going without having to deal with wet wood at the start. So be sure you guys do that. It's a very friendly gesture. So today, my feet are killing me. My arches are killing me. And I figured out why. I am, I'm hiking without insoles today. There is a little bit of an arch, and I didn't even notice this, inside the Outer Lone Peak Neo shells. I pretty much added a medium arch to a low arch, and I don't have that high of an arch, apparently. So, we're gonna see how this goes. So Gary, you said your Palante pack was pretty uncomfortable? <laughs> Not the whole trip. <laughs> Day one, when Day I one. had over 20 pounds in it. Because it's frameless. Yeah, it just, um, without the frame, it doesn't carry as much, but, uh, you don't really need a frame as much once you get under like a 10 pound base weight. Hmm. It doesn't activate as well. Gotcha. <clears throat> so today we are going to walk through Seven Springs, which is a ski resort. I'm not sure if they have the snow machines going or not, but uh, it would be cool to get there and there's like a foot of snow. Yeah, <laughs> and skiers are flying <laughs> and by. And skiers are flying by and we're dodging them like, uh, <laughs> Frogger. what was that, Frogger, that's it, yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. Very windy day. Can we call this day blustery at this point? Yes. Blustery day. Blustery. I think there's a Pooh Bear episode about it. Oh yeah, Winnie the Pooh and the blustery day. Yeah, that's where I came from. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, insole shoes are actually working out better than having insoles, so maybe that's what was wrong the entire time. We are at Seven Springs. We're going right up to that building. Where are we? Right over there. I remember that. That's where the vending machines are. Yeah, so we're going straight up there. Oh, God. Literally right in front of all the skiers, so... Uh, we need to play some Frogger at this point, boys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're filming me filming you. Yeah, all zoomed wow. in, Wow. Like. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Tim? This is sweet. That's really neat. I've never seen it like this before. And definitely need some micro spikes. That's so cool to see skiers up here. Different from any time I've ever been up here. <laughs> Heading up to the lodge. Might actually get some pizza up there. We'll see. Yeah, it is a lot of people, but pizza might be worth waiting for. Yeah. Tim is stuck. He. Oh no. Oh jeez. <laughs> All right, guys, Lake Tahoe, Seven Springs. We made it to the highest point of the Laurel Highlands hiking trail. And we're thinking we're gonna stop at this lodge right here, see if we can get some pizza or some lunch. It's about that time. All right, guys, we got good food, finally. Shocked up some beer. That's the best they had up here. 
Tim, what do you think, man? <laughs> this is pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> a little different, a little different, I must say. I'm gonna enjoy this though. All right, guys, got done with the beer and pizza. And what an excellent lunch spot, man. I tell you what, that was freaking delicious. Gosh. <laughs> you cold, Timmy? Yeah, the wind's up here. Get the whip it. Yeah. So we get down here, Yeah, we go down here. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, and this is this is the old trail system right here. I don't know why they rerouted us. This is scenic. That's really nice. Don't reroute us to the woods. Show me some scenery. On the way out of the lodge, uh, some guy stopped me right before we hit the door and asked if I'm that internet guy. And uh, so I got recognized up in Seven Springs. Pretty cool. We saw the last Laurel Highlands video where I did it solo. So always awesome to get recognized. What was he saying, Tim? He said I inspired him to just get outside and do something. Yeah, he said it would be fun, right? Yeah. He's trying to love you. That's awesome. So, and that's what this channel is all about, getting people outside. <laughs> <laughs> now that it comes going. out pretty fast. Yep. You know, right after Seven Springs, I've said this before, but potable water. Have you said this before? I said Have it like said four I times, I think, now. I think this might be the final Laurel Highlands video here. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. I think people are going to get burned out. No. No? You want seven more? I'll film it in my uh, channel. <laughs> oh, oh, a channel, Gary. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What is this? Huh? You have a channel now? No, I don't have a channel. Are you gonna Are you gonna do one for the AT? No, just for Lower Islands. No. Oh, oh God, <laughs> Gary. Well, we got a half a mile to camp, and it's only one o'clock. So, <laughs> pretty good. We're definitely gonna have some downtime at camp this day. Get some more footage, hopefully, of camp and just kind of BSing with the guys. Tomorrow is only a five mile day back to the car. We parked it at Route 653 parking lot. Uh, so tonight's the last night, obviously. Like I said, we were hoping for more snow, and this would have kind of the mileage here would have kind of worked out perfectly, I think. But uh, hey, we get what we can get and get out when we can. So that's all that matters. All right, guys, 1:30. We've reached Grindle Ridge Shelter area. We're just waiting on Timothy to walk up the hill, and. Uh, First things first, the sky is getting kind of gray. We are expecting rain about 30 minutes ago, and it's supposed to continue until about three in the morning. So we're definitely gonna get to camp, set up, and then uh, get some firewood and just hang out in the shelters again. We reserved the shelter and the couple camping areas, so should be good to go tonight. Once I stay here, I've then stayed at every single shelter area on the Lower Highlands Trail, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna set up right in between these two beautiful trees. It's gonna be a fantastic view. Might get a little windy though. Looks like we have a Cuban fiber palace over here. We got the duplex, solplex, my tarp. Uh, Tim's gonna stay in the shelter tonight, number five. And let me show you what's going on in here. It's definitely gonna get windy tonight, especially if it decides to rain. Uh, we're definitely up on the ridge, one of the highest points on the trail. I think Seven Springs is down that way, or over here a little bit. But uh, yeah, we have a ton of firewood between the four of us. We each probably three logs per trip. We got this set over here, and we got Gary and company with more firewood over here. Lots of firewood ready to go. And we, dude, Alex has it made. Look at all this. You got piles ready for five o'clock. I love it. <laughs> Fire cat. Gary yeah. paid you $10 for pizza, cookie, and a Gatorade. Yeah. Thanks, for Gary. Yep. Gary, thank you so much for paying me for the yeah. pizza, <laughs> cookie, and a Gatorade. You're welcome. <laughs> I won't let you know. This kid forgets his wallet all the time, so I had to buy his lunch today. Yep. But it was, lunch was awesome. awesome. Venmo is a really good app. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It is good. Yeah. Which, yes. I like those. Buffalo chicken sandwiches. Oh, yeah, buffalo chicken Oh, I love blue buffalo cheese. chicken. Yeah. No, uh -oh. ranch. <laughs> I like ranch on mine. I'm not a big blue cheese guy. I love blue cheese. All right, guys. So it's about 3:30. Or buffalo pizza with ranch. Alex is getting the fire going. And then we're gonna take this cap, which is full of the seven drops of each part A, part B Aquamira. Put it in a bottle, and then that'll be good for about yeah, about 20 minutes from now. All right, let's get food cooking here. 
This is the BRS titanium stove. You can find this on Amazon for what, about five bucks, guys? Yeah, 20 pro. Pretty nice. What? Oh, 10 to 15. I got it for five. I don't know what he's talking about. Five dollars? Yeah. It's like on sale. I think I paid eight or nine. Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys can see how much this cranks up on the BRS. So we're gonna turn it down, so make it fuel efficient. <laughs> didn't do this. <laughs> what? The noodles just take a while. They take forever. Forever. My friends are so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Eating beef stroganoff next to a mountain house ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> the mountain house ambassador uh -huh. himself. Hey. Mm. <laughs> All right, guys. So I wanted to take some time and show you guys this storm that's going to be coming in around 8 o'clock. Apparently, it's going to be pretty bad. High winds, lots of rain. Could be some thunder, some lightning. We'll see. Uh, first of all, make sure that there's no widow makers. We did a pretty good job here. We were aware of a couple around this side. So in, basically in the middle of our stuff. So it's it's like small branches we're talking about. Nothing really crazy if you can see this thing right there. It's very, very small. It wouldn't even puncture a tarp, but we are aware of it. Uh, another one's right here, hanging right there. Again, not very big. It wouldn't even puncture a tarp. Uh, in the winter, it's a little hard to determine this, but you just gotta look up and just kind of, you know, figure it out like a little puzzle. However, I did want to show you this. So because we are expecting high winds, rain, it's pretty calm right now, which is good. I did lower the tarp about six inches and we're putting this tarp in what we call storm mode. So you see, we're all locked up with the doors. The tarp is pitched tight. I could even go down further like this and put the stake right in the ground here, but I have it back out just to give me some extra room inside. I'm actually really hoping for a crazy and wild end to this trip. That'd be awesome. Get some. Wait. I'm waiting. Ah. Tim's naked. I gotta wait. <laughs> Half, naked. Half naked, sorry. Anyway, but it'd be awesome if we get some kind of crazy rain. I could deal without the wind, but if we can get, just get poured on, maybe some lightning and thunder, that'd be, that'd be awesome way to end this trip. But who knows, nothing could happen. It's the weathermen we're talking about. Decent. You're decent? Yeah. Are you sure you're on camera? Hiker decent. Hiker decent? Yeah. Okay. Hiker decent. Here he is. There's Tim. What's up, Tim? How you hey, doing, dude? Good. Yeah, Tim's about you, to arrest you. When you're bored <laughs> <laughs> at camp. That's <laughs> 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 I look like I don't know what to do with my life. Look at that. That's a horrible picture of me. Delete that immediately. <laughs> oh Let me see you. <laughs> I'm fun. How was that fine? Yeah, you look know. pretty. You look fine in that one. Well, Tim. Tim! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Delete that picture immediately. <laughs> oh. Hey, that was fun. Alright, guys, it's about quarter to nine. Everybody's in their shelters, just kind of chilling out for the night, just relaxing. I'm going to watch some videos, call it a night. In about an hour and 20 minutes, we'll have some kind of storm here, I guess. Hoping for a big one, because we're definitely all locked down. I'd like to give our uh, our setups a nice test. So, good night guys, I'll bring you back if anything awesome happens. Good night everybody. Oh, good morning everybody. That was a very hot night for me, I'll tell you what. Zero degree was just way too hot for the temperatures right now. Plus, as you can see, it's pretty foggy and humid out. I'm gonna, uh, I guess I'm gonna go back to the hammock and get that torn down. Make some coffee, and then we'll get out of here. Fire's still going from the other night. Tim's actually stayed the night in here. But you get to wake up to a nice warm fire, so that's pretty good. Anyway, break down camp. You have any inspirational quotes for the day? Three days of rain is never fun. That's not very inspirational. Yeah, take it day by day. Okay. Oh, oh day go. by day. I like it. That's Good job, Gary. Yeah. Take it day by day. Anyway, we're all pretty much packed up here. Really foggy. It's going to be kind of cool walking through this today. <laughs> <laughs> on our way 
way back to the car. We got five miles today in the fog. It's gonna be pretty cool. I'm rocking the shorts. We're gonna see if I need to put some R1 pants on or not. Hopefully I'll be alright with the shorts. Once I warm up, I'll be fine. A little chilly right now though. But uh yeah, good night. Uh could have slept a little bit better, but you get what you can get. I'm still happy about the first night though, sleeping like 11 hours, that was pretty neat. So, I think everyone had a real good time. Anyway, we're just going up about a quarter to a half a mile back up to the trail. That walk up Grendel Ridge is a rocky one, just FYI. It's one of the rockiest spur trails you can get down to a shelter area. Uh, we're gonna see this old, old cemetery today. If you've watched any of my other videos, you're probably aware of that already though. And the uh, trail is a mess. Very wet, very muddy at this point. And all the snow seems to have completely melted at this point. Yeah, it's still ice in here. Love these rock formations. Like nothing. You can't see anything at all. Yeah. <laughs> this would be a cool spot though. I could, I could tell. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, I don't even like walking under that. That ain't good. Crack, crack, crack. Wow. Not good. I'm here in the road. We just passed mile marker 19. Got our cemetery. Pay our respects. And then uh, cross 653 and pretty soon we'll be back to the car. Gary, how'd you like the trip? Pretty good. Tim. Excellent. Meerkat. Like it Everybody liked it. Good, yeah. good. Yeah, just one more shot at the graveyard here. Really old grave site. Really cool. All right, guys. Well, we just hit the uh, the spur trail that leads back to the parking lot. I think everybody had a good time, right, guys? We all had a good time. Yeah. So excellent, like lead into a winter trip. We were, like I said, we were hoping for 10 inches of snow. But you know what, it doesn't matter as long as you get outside is the big thing. I think all the gear handled really well. Layering the quilts worked excellent. The only thing I really had a problem with was shoes again, which uh, seems to be my thing. So guys, I'm Frozen with Outdoor Adventures. Be sure to check out Meerkat's video and Tim Watson's video. Different perspective here. And find time and go on your own adventure. I'll see you on the trail. <laughs>